good evening everyone on behalf of bangalore chamber of industry and commerce we welcome you all for this exclusive workshop on al and ml for dummies the session is organized under the aegis of it and cyber security expert committee the expert committee is chaired by mr manas das gupta who is the partner texans and today's speaker and the co-chairman of our it and cyber security expert committee mr amitabh saxena who is also the founder and ceo of annexus europe and founder data medium thank you very much sir and hearty welcome to bcic thank you very much for accepting our invitation to address at this workshop the committee is also co-chaired by mr pradeep chakravarti who is the founder and ceo of advisor coach and mentored by kr anjana who is the head talent acquisition for bfsi at tcs in order to avoid any disturbance during the session we have muted the audio and video of all the participants can you bear with us however you can share your queries in the chat box the speaker will be picking it up for responding to the queries we will have the q and a session at around 14 415 i'd like to briefly introduce mr amitabh saxena who is a data scientist and an artificial intelligence trainer with an overall 32 years of experience in services and manufacturing domains he has been working actively in the field of data analytics and for the last 6 years he has been extensively involved in mentoring ai based applications for ai startups he is also a lean and six sigma master black belt cphq pmp trainer and consultant he has trained more than 25000 professionals worldwide he has conducted many programs for several clients on data analysis and has been guiding organizations on ai strategy in manufacturing logistics banking petrochemicals healthcare services and many of the domains he has appeared on multiple tv shows and won several awards for his work in organization transformation welcome you once again mr amitabh saxena uh, thanks Mr. Manas, are you there? Uh, maybe Manas uh, might be having a technical glitch. I also welcome the participants once again for this wonderful session, and our hearty welcome to our office bearers who also have joined the session. Now I hand over the platform to you, Mr. Abhijit Singh. Now over to you, sir. So it's a pleasure to have all of you here uh, for AI and ML for Dummies. Now I thought that uh, being in Bangalore when we named the the program as AI and ML for Dummies, so I thought that uh, you know uh, in Bangalore we'll not get anyone because everyone knows something about AI and ML. Uh, I, before that, uh, let me uh, know uh, the chat is not disabled, right? Chat is uh, enabled. So it is all of enabled, you can sir. Yeah. So all of you yes. can interact through the chat, although. I, because the time is very very short and i want to cover lots of stuff uh, it will be like uh, just uh, scratching the surface of course but i'll try to give you a bigger overview of uh, as much as possible of ai ml even i will just show you those who have not yet uh, uh, those who are not yet motivated to learn python i'll just show if if time permits very very briefly how easy it is Uh, to learn python or you know download python it's all easy it's it's free as well so why not do that uh, so on that note uh, just in, in 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 the in the chat box if if it does can i have a can i have can i have a, a little bit of uh, um idea how many of you have never attended any ai or ml introduction training before so if you can just say Uh, just say no. No means you have not attended. So I'll, I'll just get an idea, because if I if I think if I see that a lot of people have already attended, then okay. So there are there are quite a few. Yeah. So I okay. So so the the purpose of this uh, uh, presentation is to 
uh, introduce you to the basic, very, very basic concepts of what is AI, what is ML, what is data science. At least in the meetings, you should be able to give uh, good inputs. You should be able to know the capabilities of AI and uh, ML and uh, even deep learning. And uh, you, you will get a little bit of uh, information of how it can be applied to your organization. So once you know the, 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 the kind of applications which are possible, then you can find the right people. And also, uh, you can also give your suggestions. So based on that, uh, I will just share my screen. And so this is a very, very basic program. And if you have already attended some training program before on AI and ML, uh, definitely you're not going to learn much in today's program. Um, although I started with the, uh, uh, you know, my data analytics journey, I'll tell you. Uh, oh, before that, uh, uh, about the organization, uh, we have trained uh, more than 150,000 people uh, around the world, professionals around the world. And uh, uh, I have... Uh, uh, personally, uh, been involved in a lot of Team Six Sigma projects over the last 20 years. And because uh, Six Sigma, many of you would know, uh, is, uh, uses heavy data analytics. So it was very logical for me. It was natural for me seven years ago when the data analytics started booming up and uh, AI started booming, booming up. I ventured into that area. Uh, initially, it was into three, uh, three to four years, it was into banking uh, because I had worked in Deutsche Bank and Riyadh Bank and AXA before. So it was initially in that area, but for the last uh, two to three years, it has been uh, with healthcare. I, I'm advising some of the Ministry of, um, uh, in Middle East countries, so some of the Ministry of Health uh, uh, in the AI strategy. So probably you might find that uh, many of the examples which I would be talking about would be from healthcare. I'm not sure how many examples I will be able to talk about, but as much as possible, whatever I can, I will try to do. Uh, I'll begin with the uh, introduction is over now. So research areas of AI, then what is machine learning? Then what are what is deep learning? Then we'll see uh, where data science fits in. And then after that, if time permits, now that's if the time permits, maybe five to 10 minutes of uh, introduction to Python and uh, um, I'm not sure if AI applications I'll be able to do because I'm assuming many of you have already known by now how AI has impacted our lives. So maybe I will uh, skip that part. Now, what is artificial intelligence? Now, I'm not talking about artificial. Just let us understand what is intelligence. Intelligence is the computational part of the ability to achieve goals in the world. Varying kinds and degrees of intelligence occur in people, even animals, and even some machines. Now, what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence would be to make machines think like human beings. To make machines behave like human beings. Now, it's definitely not possible to make a machine exactly behave like human being, but we can try to resemble that behavior or that thought process as close uh, as much as possible, as close to human beings. In fact, some of the areas machines are capable of doing much, much better as compared to humans. So what is the main idea, main goal of AI? If someone asks me, uh, tell me what is the AI? in just uh, say two to three minutes. So what I would say is developing an agent. Now, before I go into that uh, definition of agent, let's, let's imagine, uh, let, let's, let's imagine that, okay, if let's, I, let's, I, let, let's, uh, let me call human beings as agent. Okay, so how do human beings react to an environment? How do we function? We have an environment. We take the inputs from the environment. We look around what's happening and we perceive the environments through certain sensors like uh, eyes, ears, nose, etc. through the sensory organs and process this information within the brain. And after processing that information, we decide to take an action. 
and then we take an action through the effectors. The effectors are in our case, the hands, legs, uh, the, the tongue, the facial expression. You know, the, these are the effectors. So through these effectors, we act on the environment. And then we achieve some goal, whatever goal we have fixed, we try to achieve that goal. So the whole process is we perceive the environment through the senses, and then after processing that information through the effectors, I act on the environment. Now the whole goal of AI is to develop an agent. Of course, it would be machine, it would be artificial agent. Now I can begin with the very simple reflex agent, means that agent uh, can understand the environment through the sensors. There are so many sensors I can have, uh, computer vision, I can get the inputs of uh, uh, like different types of inputs. I can get the sound, uh, visuals, etc., images. And based on that, I process that those inputs and based on a condition action rule, which has been pre-written in that agent, that agent takes an action on the environment. So that would be called as a simple reflex agent. Now, if I make it a little bit more complex. I can make a utility-based agent the way human beings uh, behave. Say, for example, as a human being, when I see the environment, I look at the environment, I perceive what's happening, what's going on. And based on that, I process that information. Now I have got uh, two uh, sources, uh, you know, two additional sources. The one is of course coming from the uh, data from the environment. One is uh, 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 one is uh, the condition actions rules, whatever learnings I have got, and one more, which is the objective. You no, know, I have set an objective. You no, know, I would like to do something. I would like to at at attain something. I I'm I'm trying to use. I'm because this course is for uh, like say <laughs> AI and ML for dummies, so I'm not going to use any jargons. So I'll try to use uh, layman's language. So when I uh, I have got certain you know, condition actions rules with me. I also have got one more guiding objective. And I can also initiate the same thing in the artificial agent. How? By introducing something called as utility points. Utility points could be something like, uh, let's imagine a child when, uh, you know, he's being taught. The teacher tells that, okay, if you learn this lesson, I'll give you five chocolates. Or sometimes they will say, I'll give you five marks. If you, if you give me the right answer, if you learn this, you'll get five marks. If you don't learn, if you learn it uh, maybe 50%, I'll give you two marks. And uh, sometimes it could be negative marks also. Sometimes it could be punishment also. So here for the student, the utility points are the scores, the marks. Or in uh, another situation, if uh, you are a parent-child relationship, it could be chocolates. So these are the utility points. So what I do is I introduce the utility points concept in the artificial agent and, and make a program so that I try to in, you know, maximize the utility points. So this is the whole idea. And the, the, that's, the, that's the whole struggle you know, to develop an AI application. Now, AI application, a typical example would be uh, uh, self-driving car or driverless car. Uh, there are so many applications, AI applications. Now to make an AI application, lots of uh, 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 you know, streams are required. It's not like you know, a, an, an AI expert can build an AI application. You need mechanical engineers, you need electrical engineers, you need uh, uh, say computer programmers, you need domain experts, like for example, a lot of work I've been doing in the healthcare now, right now. So uh, we are dealing with the physicians. Now they don't know anything about AI, but their inputs is very, very crucial. So, so we need a domain experts also. And many of you are already domain experts and there lies a big chance for everyone to contribute to AI and data analytics and machine learning, which is very, very uh, happening thing nowadays as uh, you already know. And uh, there's a huge requirement of uh, domain experts. Uh, which can help build certain, uh, uh, such AI agents. Okay, it all started. I'll not uh, go into because of the uh, lack of time. I'll not run into the history, but AI has existed for a long, long time. Uh, a thermostat could also be called as an artificial agent, uh, which can increase or decrease 
the uh, opening of the valve based on the room temperature. Uh, but not everything can be called as uh, artificial AI application. So Ellen Turing had given a test called Turing test uh, to test whether a particular application is artificially intelligent or not. So imagine B and C being human beings and A is the, the agent which we claim to have developed, the AI application which we claim to have, to have developed. So what I would do is I will tell C to interact with A and B. Now, C doesn't know. They are, let's say you can call it as A is hidden in one room and B is hidden in another room. And C doesn't know in which room you have got the human and which room you have got the machine. And C interacts with both of them. And if C gets confused, C cannot tell you know, which room has got the machine and which room has got the agent. We say it has passed the Turing test. And if the application passes this test, we call it as uh, an AI application. So it should be able to perfectly or very, very closely be able to mimic the human being. Um, Though then after that, of course, pre-model was developed and uh, uh, John McCarthy is uh, known as the father of uh, AI. Uh, in 1956, he uh, uh, in fact uh, invited everyone, all the people who were working in the field of AI and he term, actually he coined the term called artificial intelligence and uh, a first conference was held in Dartmouth. Uh, uh, so, you know, actually it is, it is like almost, uh, I would say, 70, 60, 70 years now. But why AI has gained a lot of traction nowadays? Because we have got, over the last 10 to 15 years, we have got the capability to process a lot of data in a short time. So that is the whole idea. And that's why we are able to uh, you know, make applications which are useful to uh, humans. So there are various branches of AI, robotics, vision systems, learning systems, natural language processing, neural networks, expert systems. Let us see uh, some of them uh, very, very quickly. So expert systems are uh, those systems where what I would do is I would download all the information from a human expert using a knowledge engineer. And once this information is downloaded, let's say, for example, an engineer or a chartered accountant, let's say take the example of chartered accountant, he gives all his knowledge. And not only one chartered accountant, in fact, I can use two, three or four or five experts. And we create a knowledge base. After creating a knowledge base, based on whatever a chartered accountant does. So if you are calculating the tax, so whatever rules and conditions chartered accountant is applying, I will create an inference engine based on that. And I'll create a user interface so that a user who may not be a chartered accountant can also ask the questions and he will also get the answer. And these answers will be coming as if uh, from an expert. Sometimes they will be, uh, you know, and that's what we see nowadays. Sometimes they're better than the experts. So nowadays you have got expert systems. Uh, who can predict your probability of a disease if you uh, talk about talk about expert systems in healthcare you have got uh, uh, in uh, engineering you can predict the uh, 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 like the, the safety how safe is a particular equipment or what is the probability of a failure of a machine after say uh, 5 years or 10 years or what could be the preventive maintenance schedule for a machine so all these things can be easily done using expert systems. So that, is, that was about expert system. One of the most famous expert system is uh, IBM Watson. And uh, just to take an example, like for, uh, there are so many expert systems available on, I, I can give you lots of links. You can just uh, you know, experience those expert systems. You can feed in data, like for example, I'm sure some of you might have used such uh, expert systems without even knowing that you're using an expert system. They go to some websites and sh uh, give, give your uh, uh, symptoms of a disease and it will tell you uh, what is the probability that you are having a particular disease. So here, uh, let's say someone has headache, body ache, nausea, and then based on uh, uh, that expert system will tell you. Uh, so here, uh, if you're not ruling out a physician altogether uh, at this point of time, uh, we have a of course, the medical expert, the patient's database, plus the rules 
which have been fed into the expert systems and all these things combined together will give you a much much better uh, uh, diagnosis as you would have got uh, you know, using only a human uh, expert uh, so this is the uh, ibm watson uh, supercomputer it has lots of information uh, from all the domains uh, it can be also used on a payment basis i'm sure many of you are using it also uh, uh, and uh, uh, if you are from healthcare you can use the relevant uh, 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 healthcare uh, uh, domain of ibm watson if you are from petrochemical industries you can do that and uh, it was in news many times it has been in news uh, uh, of winning a jeopardy or uh, uh, winning a you know chess championship it was long long time ago and uh, it has almost match the uh, uh, a, a human beings in many uh, cases. Uh, I'll skip this part uh, because I've got certain videos also, but as I said, I'll give you the video links later on. You can watch them uh, because of the lack of time. I'll just uh, proceed to the next one, natural language processing. I'm sure many of you have already experienced that. Uh, it has got two branches, NLU, NLG, natural language understanding, langu natural language uh, uh, generation. Uh, say, say, for example, all of you have uh, known in the school that, uh, you know, a, a English language or sentence comprises of a noun phrase and a verb phrase. So NP means noun phrase and VP means verb phrase. And we also know noun phrase comprises of an article and a noun. And the verb phrase comprises of a verb and noun phrase. And noun phrase in turn comprises of article and a noun. So I can train the machine very easily by identifying a sentence and it can find out where is the noun phrase, where is the verb phrase, and where is the article, where are the nouns. And if you see this example, the doctor examines the patient. So machine can detect that the uh, examines the patient is the verb phrase and noun phrase, uh, noun phrase is the doctor. And uh, again, in the verb phrase, we have got a noun phrase, which has the patient and the verb is the exams. So it can read and understand what is being written. A doctor examining a patient based on a certain training, a machine can even spell out, machine can even check, machine can even tell you that in this picture, the doctor is examining the patient. There have been lots and lots of uh, applications of natural language processing uh, in different industries. Um, uh, one of the, just let me, okay, I'll just show you the next one. Maybe one, uh, one the one in the healthcare industry, I think. Lots of journals, lots of uh, literature, uh, which are, it's not possible for a human being and it can read all these publications on a real time basis. It can draw insights and uh, once it draws insights, it can very, very easily understand the sentiment. It will tell you on what topic this article is about and which industry, which domain, uh, what's the sentiment? Is it like a, a, it's a research publication or it's uh, trying to make a, a you know, uh, it, it's trying to make a judgment, what's the emotion uh, they're trying to express. And uh, in legal cases, it is very widely used, NLP is widely used, because it's very, very difficult for a lawyer to read all the judgments uh, around the world, uh, which are related to that particular case. And obviously, you can imagine once you have got the expert system, the kind of help the expert system can provide, even in healthcare. Uh, once you know that you have got so much of knowledge, when you are uh, doing some research on a particular uh, treatment of a disease, uh, like cancer, etc., you can imagine the speed of the research, how fast, how how much it could increase uh, by using these expert systems combined with NLP, natural language processing. This was about natural language processing. Uh, then we have robots. Uh, robots are about uh, uh, robots are those agents which not only can think like human beings, but also act like human beings. So they have the capability of acting on the environment. They can take physical action on the environment. We have seen a lot of uh, examples of robots in manufacturing industries where 
they have replaced human beings especially in the unsafe environment we have even robot soldiers nowadays who are fighting the wars so that is about robots um i just uh, yeah robotic surgery is one of the key areas uh, which uh, many of us are i'm i'm sure you have heard of and uh, uh, of course, we are not robotic out. surgery involves using this instrument, the Da Vinci robot, which is a forearm robot, which allows a surgeon to manipulate tissue inside the body through small incisions. The instruments that you see here, these robotic instruments, are actually placed through the body through a trocar. These trocars are basically a portal between the outside and the inside of the body. These instruments have more precision and more dexterity than standard surgical instruments. This is the Da Vinci scope. And during surgery, a camera is mounted on the scope and provides a high definition view with very intense light. This view gives me a three dimensional vision inside the body, which allows me to see things better with more clarity than I can see with my own eyes. The robot has many advantages for surgery. And what this allows me to do is surgery with less trauma to the tissues, which means better healing for my patients. So th that was about uh, robots. So we have learned about expert system, uh, NLP, robots. Uh, even there is one more area called computer visions. Uh, uh, most of us have already uh, experienced that, uh, that. So I will not go uh, uh, talk too much about that. But let me talk about the area which is uh, which has got lots of potential nowadays and uh, which is uh, uh, about deep learning. So after 15 minutes or so, I will put all the things together so that uh, you can understand where does AI, machine learning, deep learning and data science, everything, how they are correlated. Uh, but before that, let us understand those topics one by one individually. Now, uh, human brains is composed of 100 billion neurons. And uh, now we would like to, if you were to you know, mimic the human brain, oh, how is it possible? So if you look at the human brain, neurons are connected to other thousand cells by exons and stimuli are accepted by the dendrites. And the inputs create electric impulses that travel. So see uh, how, how a memory is created. So if I show someone a pen, let us say a child, a pen, I show a pen in the they accept that dendrites accept the inputs and let's imagine these are the neurons and these are the exons exons are like you know you can see these blue ones these are the exons as soon as something is learned it passes through multiple exons like you know thousands of exons it creates a you can see a pathway uh, and the myelin sheath the sheath uh, which is covering the exon it gets thickened and if I keep learning, if a child keeps learning same thing again and again, this myelin sheet thickens and after some time, uh, it becomes a belief. So two or three times, if I tell that this particular thing is a pen, the child after three or four times, uh, it will say that, yeah, it is a pen. And that's how we learn. Now, the same thing can be replicated in machines as well. So I have got input layers. I can create the input layers. Now, silicons and wires act as living neurons and dendrites here. And nodes imitate the neurons. And each node takes input, processes data, and passes on to other node. So it will look something like, uh, uh, we also call this as the uh, actual technical term for this is multi-layer perceptron. So what we are talking uh, here is, I'll, I'll try to show you. I think we have got some time. So maybe I'll show you a quick video of how it is being identified. Uh, but before that, let me talk a little bit about, I, I'll try to be as uh, non-technical as possible. So I have got an input layer. Okay, This is the input layer. And I have got an output layer. Let's say I've got, uh, two possible outcomes. Person is going to buy or person is not going to buy. Now, based on certain inputs, like for example, age, uh, experience of the person, uh, the salary of the person or what he has bought previously. So these are the inputs. Based on the inputs, 
I can make the machines learn if I keep on continuously feeding the data using certain hidden layers. Now, why it is known as hidden layer? Because I don't, we don't know. None of us know how they function, but we can add on the layer. That's physical possible, physically possible. In fact, in our session, in my AI and ML sessions, uh, we what we do is we create those layers. We we uh, we experiment with the number of layers. So I can just introduce one layer or second layer. And based on that, how many layers, one or two, three layers, which, how many layers are good enough to make a machine learn so that it can start giving a meaningful output. So as I introduce the layers, what, uh, 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 what happens is there are certain functions. It tries out all the functions, all the possible functions, you know, it, it, like all the possible combinations. And it tries to predict whether the person is going to buy or not buy. So you can imagine, just continue, uh, you know, these permutations and combinations. What will happen? It will try out each and everything. And based on whatever was the reality during the learning phase, it tries to learn that given a particular age, experience, salary, a person entering to a mall or you know a person coming to a website is likely to buy or not buy so this is how you know we we we, uh, we make the machine learn uh, let me show you exactly how it happens uh, uh, i'll send you the full uh, video later on but i'll just tell you this is an example of how uh, we are training the machine to identify a number okay so there are all possible numbers. Now, what we do is we, yeah, just, I hope, uh, just let me know if you are able to uh, hear the sound of the video. If you're not able to hear the sound of the video, just let me know. This is a three. ranging from zero for black pixels up to one for white pixels. This number inside the neuron is called its activation. And the image you might have in mind here is that each neuron is lit up when its activation is a high number. So all of these 784 neurons make up the first layer of our network. Now jumping over to the last layer, this has 10 neurons, each representing one of the digits. The activation in these neurons, again, some number that's between zero and one, represents how much the system thinks that a given image corresponds with a given digit. There's also a couple layers in between called the hidden layers, which for the time being should just be a giant question mark for how on earth this process of recognizing digits is gonna be handled. In this network, I chose two hidden layers, each one with 16 neurons. And admittedly, that's kind of an arbitrary choice. To be honest, I chose two layers based on how I want to motivate the structure in just a moment. And 16, well, that was just a nice number to fit on the screen. In practice, there is a lot of room for experiment with the specific structure here. The way the network operates, activations in one layer determine the activations of the next layer. And of course, the heart of the network as an information processing mechanism comes down to exactly how those activations from one layer bring about activations in the next layer. It's meant to be loosely analogous to how in biological networks of neurons, some groups of neurons firing cause certain others to fire. Now the network I'm showing here has already been trained to recognize digits. And let me show you what I mean by that. It means if you feed in an image lighting up all 784 neurons of the input layer, according to the brightness of each pixel in the image, that pattern of activations causes some very specific pattern in the next layer, which causes some pattern in the one after it, which finally gives some pattern in the output layer. And the brightest neuron of that output layer is the network's choice, so to speak, for what digit this image represents. And before jumping into the map. Okay, so if you are thinking, uh, I hope, uh, am I audible right now? Yeah. So, uh, see, if you're thinking that uh, you have to really master some complicated, uh, 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 some knowledge uh, to, to you know, master ANN, 
uh, just to tell you that it's very very easy nowadays uh, you know you have got uh, uh, computer programs which are get, which can be easily written and one of the main uh, uh, you know main uh, coding language is the python language and uh, you just call certain functions so you just have to call certain functions you just have to know which algorithm would be applicable to a particular problem so that's the only training you need to have and rest of the things are done by the programs so don't have to write too many complicated codes and it's much much easier for almost everyone to uh, you know become a uh, say sort of data scientist or even master a particular area of ai of course no one can master whole of ai as i told you you have to choose which area you would like to master so finally the result would be like uh, you have got uh, i'm training a machine and uh, and uh, now uh, i've got uh, various animals and uh, objects and once i train the machine it is able to give me the right answers so that was about ann artificial neural network now let me go a little bit uh, you know, let, let us try to understand the different terms which are uh, very very popularly used when we talk about ai or machine learning so uh, if i just uh, so i think we have uh, we have got a fair understanding of, of what exactly ai is ai is making a machine or you know building a machine which is behaving or thinking like human beings then ai the ultimate goal is to develop an ai application you know, a robot which can lift the things uh, and keep it at the appropriate places or say self driving car for that matter that is what is the ultimate goal and machine learning is a subset of ai and uh, in the subset of ai i am making the machine learn so i am using certain uh, statistical uh, uh, formulae here i am using uh, some set, uh, set, uh, statistical uh, uh, say data uh, data to i i'm i'm trying to get the data from the uh, various uh, sources and uh, making the machine learn now there can be three types of uh, learnings one could be supervised learning uh, another could be uh, unsupervised learning and uh, another could be reinforcement learning so supervised learning has got labeled data so i'll give uh, some few examples of supervised learning and uh, very few uh, example maybe one example of supervised learning then maybe i'll give you one example of unsupervised learning also and maybe one example of reinforcement uh, learning in the next 5 to 10 minutes so supervised learning what it would do it will study the labeled data the data have already some features and uh, based on the preliminary analysis of the data of course you have to uh, clean the data you have to remove all the, uh, the so some of the data points may be missing so you have to fit in you have to uh, plug in those uh, missing uh, 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 data sets you have to you know, make some predictions and based on that you have to fill in those missing values or sometimes you have to remove that uh, if the, the, the lot of features are missing from the data you have to remove that whole data so after cleaning the data you train the machine and based on that you create a model so how it is done so uh, l- let's uh, uh, let me give an example i think i'll try to be as simple as possible all of you or many of you means i, I won't say all of you but many of you would remember a straight line equation which we learned uh, in uh, school days uh, if i give you one example let us say i've got some data of experience and age of the uh, people in in any company a person with zero years of experience the person is uh, 22 if the person is 10 years age is 22 and this is 30 then it is 52 so if i plot this data uh, you will and you can make a guess so zero you've got 10 then you have 20 and then you have 30 and uh, you've got at 0 it is 
at uh, uh, you know 10 you have 32 and so on and so forth so you can predict you know if i ask you another question that if the person experiences 15 years what would be the age and you can easily predict that his age would be 37 of course there would be some a uh, little bit of errors we call it residuals means what remains after i predict a value and what what is predicted by the uh, model and what is actually uh, you know the observation there is a there would be some difference but this residual this difference would be not very high if the model is able to predict really well so what i need to understand is and what typically a data scientist does is after studying the data, now this is a labeled data, labeled data because I've got the data with me and there are labels or features associated with that data. So I've got two labels here. The data scientist would predict, now this here lies the only expertise of a data scientist that uh, he would say, well, I think I can fit a regression equation here or straight line equation here. So he will try to fit in this into uh, if you remember a plus bx there is a you know, regression model simple linear regression model so he would try to fit this in age is equal to 22 plus experience so where the value of a is the y-intercept where the you know the, the, the then the value of x here let's say i, I call this as x and this is the y so when the experience is zero age is 22 so that becomes the value of a and then here comes the 22 so this part we call this is algorithm now there are a very uh, some of the often used algorithms uh, which uh, data scientists and as when you are if you want to do a data scientist course you need to learn a certain algorithms uh, most of com commonly used algorithms are uh, uh, regression, multiple regression, logistic regression. Uh, uh, there are, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, SVM uh, support vector machines. Uh, and uh, anyway, so the, I'll not go into too much of detail there, but uh, there are certain uh, some certain algorithms like uh, random forests, uh, which uh, are often used to solve certain problems related to machine learning. So you can, you need to just identify the algorithm and based on that, you have to create a model. Once you get the data, you divide the data into typically three parts. 60% of the data is used uh, to train the machine. Then 20% uh, of the data is used to validate uh, the uh, model and 20% of the data is used to test the model. So once I receive the, model, uh, the data, of course, this data can be pulled in through various sources. Once the machine uh, 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 take, take, takes the data, uh, it, uh, uh, once it is fed with the data, I divide this data into three parts, uh, one for testing, one for validation, and one for, uh, sorry, one for learning, one for validation and uh, one for testing. So I am able to test the model. And once I am pretty sure this model is really working well, I can deploy this model and start predicting. So I can predict, like for example, if I have got this equation, I can predict very easily the age of an individual if I know the value of experience. Now, if I keep on adding more, uh, let's say uh, here, it was pretty simple, uh, I can have, uh, a lot of uh, different uh, uh, possibilities here. Uh, I can have, uh, not necessarily always this will be true. Suppose one person is having 10 years experience and I feel, I predict his, his age is 32, but that person says my age is 37. Then in that case, I ask the question why it is so. And then that person tells me that I have taken a break. So I introduce one more feature which is important to be included in my regression equation. And uh, given this data, he says that I've got a break of five. So what will happen? I'll, it will automatically, you know, this, these things are automatically taken care of by softwares nowadays. You don't have to really 
break your head in creating these equations. Just call the function, call the regression function. There are some libraries available. The best part in Python is there are libraries available. These libraries you can use, uh, you know, to uh, all the programs, the complicated programs have been pre-written, you can say. Uh, and uh, you should just have to uh, call these functions uh, by using these libraries. And it's pretty simple. Uh, and uh, of course, you can go on and on. Like, for example, again, one more example. Person is having break of zero years, experiences 10 years. I predict that he's uh, maybe 32. But uh, the person says, no, I'm 37. So what happened? Well, this person is, let's say, a PhD. Or let's say this person is a, a doctor. So here I can introduce one more, uh, uh, you know, label or a feature. Person is doctor, yes, so, sorry. So here it is no, 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 no. And when it is yes, so what happens? Just one more uh, uh, factor or X factor we can say is added here that five times uh, doctor or physician. So if a person is physician, just add five uh, you know, years to his age and you can easily predict. So now if I know the experience of a person, how many years of break he has taken and uh, you know uh, whether the person is a physician, yes or no. Physician, yes means one. Physician, no means zero. And based on that, I can make my prediction. So this is how you know, the models are developed. Now, these are all done very, very easily. This was an example of multiple regression. You can also have, let me take one more example. Uh, often, uh, this is uh, uh, used, like for example, let me uh, take the data here, uh, just, uh, yeah. So I've got, let's say, uh, these are the labels, labeled data, and I want to predict whether the person has diabetes, yes or no. Now to understand this, because it may look a little complicated, too many features are here, too many X factors are here. Let me you know, give a simple example. Um, let us say, if I take just one factor, age, and whether the person has got diabetes, yes or no. Age is, uh, say, two years, person uh, doesn't have diabetes. I, I keep collecting data. I'm just taking a very, very simple example. I'm just simple, trying to simplify the thing as much as possible. So here, age of five years, very usually I don't see people uh, having diabetes. Uh, age 10, no, 20, no, 30. Uh, 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 no, and uh, you know, I, I'll just to make the things a little faster. I'll just click on the data of my previous program. <laughs> it's, I keep doing this entry things. Yeah, so, so so we have got the data, right? So I've got. Uh, uh, so you can see that twenty-five, no, thirty, no, thirty, yes, thirty. I start getting some yes. Then forty, no, forty, yes, fifty, yes, fifty, yes. 50, no. So we have at 50, we have no, but more of yeses. Okay. So if I plot this data here, I can say that uh, most of the time at the age of five. So, so the y-axis indicates whether the person has diabetes. Yes means one and no means zero. So at five, it is usually no. 40, you have got no as well as yeses. Now, if I ask you, what is the probability of, uh, probability generally between 0 to 1? So between 0 to 1, what is the probability of a person having diabetes at the age of 6? So most probably you will say it's 0. If I ask you, what is the uh, you know, probability of a person uh, having uh, diabetes uh, at the age of 80? Uh, most probably you'll say, if, if I, you, you're, you have to choose between 0 and 1, so you'll say it is 1 or closer to 1, it'll be 0.9 or 0.8. What is the probability of a person having a diabetes at the age of 40? So probably you'll say 0.5. So here, something called logistic regression uh, comes uh, into play. So I have to just identify that, okay, this kind of... Uh, you know, this kind of problem where I have got the X factor is the continuous data and the Y factor, which is categorical data. So when I have got a combination of categories, this is a categorical data. It is not in numbers. Earlier than age and experience, I have got numbers, right? Age and experience was a number. 
but here I've got uh, one category and one age and the output is in the categorical data, uh, binary logistic regression will, algorithm will be uh, applicable. So I have to just call that binary logistic function in, in Python. And it's very, very easy to do that. Uh, as I said, very briefly, I, we still have time. I'm trying to cover as much as possible <laughs> in the shortest possible time. So uh, I'll, I'll show you how easy it is uh, to, uh, to do this in Python. So binary logistic regression, I have to just identify, I have to use this, is, this is what I will, this algorithm is applicable here and I can develop a model based on uh, this algorithm. So you have got different algorithms. You have got uh, SVM as well. Uh, I, I'll not go into the uh, you know, details of SVM and uh, kernel trick, uh, which is also very, very, uh, uh, you know, very easy to understand and very interesting. But uh, let me uh, jump into, yeah, we were here. So this was, uh, some examples of supervised learning. Supervised learning, we learned uh, two algorithms. We learned, uh, uh, say, linear regression and even multiple regression. Here we were able to even talk about that. So I can say multiple regression or regression in general. We also learned about uh, logistic regression, logistic regression, and uh, 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 where, where when the output is the categorical data. And then we have got certain classification problem. Classification problem means why I want to classify the data into two or three categories, or I want to find the best classifications. Say, for example, uh, let's say, um, let's say I want to have voting booths. We have got now BBMP elections coming up. So where should I have the voting booths? Now, if I see the the population of the uh, city is uh, you know, distributed like this. Okay. And let's say I need to have three voting booths. I've kept this problem very simple right now so that we understand the concept. So I can have a voting booth here also, here also, and here also. Or I can have voting booth, uh, let's say, uh, here also, here also, and here also. So I will allow the machine to determine using certain... Uh, again, uh, techniques like k-means, etc. And we learn, you know, when you become a, you know, do a 30, 40 hours of a course, basic course of data science, you, know, you learn all these techniques. So you will, uh, you know, enable the machine. Machine will tell you that the best of the best uh, the locations of the voting booths could be uh, uh, these three, because that will, uh, you know, cover most of the population. Uh, because if you see the distance you know, covered uh, from the booth to the population, it, it is minimized. So that that's how, you know, so we, we, have, we can solve classification relation pro related problem, clustering related problems. So that comes under uh, supervised, unsupervised learning. So here I don't have any data to train. The machine has to do the classification. So classification relation related problem, I have gotten unsupervised. Then reinforcement learning is like uh, uh, that example of a child being given a chocolate. So if you do a good thing, I'll give you chocolates. If you don't do a, uh, you know, if you do something wrong or give me a wrong answer, you'll not get the chocolate. So if I apply this to a robot, so what will happen? Okay. This is an example of a re uh, reinforcement learning. So I allow the robot to learn by itself. A, a, a robot is uh, thrown into the environment. Walk well, you will get, uh, say, some good marks. Uh, if you are falling down, you'll get minus marks. So say, for example, well, these don't have to, you don't have to remember, even none of the data scientists remembers all these formulas. But what we remember is the, uh, the, the logic. So here, plus one, if you are able to really walk properly, minus two, if you fall, minus five, if you fall very badly. So now what happens? First, now utility points. No, the robot has to increase the points as much as possible. That's, that's the whole idea. So it starts committing mistakes uh, and it uh, generates the scores. And of course, it doesn't want negative scores. So it starts learning and you know, whenever he does the right thing, whenever it does the right thing, you know, 
it, it learns that this is the right thing to do. And after some time, you'll find that the robot starts running and sometimes even faster than the human beings. So this is an example of a reinforcement learning. So that was a reinforcement learning. Now, if I go back, yeah. So here, this was also called as a semi-supervised learning. Okay, so here you have got uh, utility points. I, I give some, uh, you know, based on certain points, you want to maximize those points. So you can use that reinforcement learning. Then one more thing, which we just uh, had, uh, we, we had seen about uh, neural networks. So we have, uh, you know, scientists thought that, can we make the machine learn the way human beings learn? The human beings learn by themselves. After At the initial stages, you get a little bit of guidance, hand-holding. But after some time, there is no teacher. You learn the things by yourself. So can we make the machine learn by itself? So here you create multi-neural network architecture. So here, we call this as deep learning. Making the machine learn by itself, that is known as deep learning. Now, once we go to the deep learning part, here, deep learning, we have got uh, 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 here, uh, we have ANN, CNN, and RNN. ANN means artificial neural network. We uh, took an example there. Here, the inputs are the numbers. When the num uh, you have got the uh, numbers at the inputs, uh, you use ANN. Not always the uh, numbers will be the input. Nowadays, you see sometimes the images are there. You know, images are also the inputs. So if you have images as the input, then you use convolution neural network. We call it a CNN, convolution neural network. And when you have got uh, uh, time series data, time series data, the way the share market is behaving, etc. Then in that case, you use RNN that is recurrent neural networks. So as a data scientist, you are just taught these parts and uh, that's what uh, happens in any AI or data science course. You're uh, taught uh, certain algorithms, you're taught a little bit of Python and yeah, you are able to uh, create or you are, uh, you are able to contribute to creating AI applications because not a single person can't create AI application. It has to be, as I told you in the beginning, it has to be a group of uh, lots of individuals uh, uh, who would contribute to make an AI application. So this is how. And where does data science fit in? So data science is some somewhere here. You can say, um, if I use this color, so data science is about the knowledge of statistics, of probability, uh, you know, linear algebra. It's pure mathematics. Of course, a little bit coupled with simple learning of, uh, of Python language. And this data scientists, you must have heard nowadays, are very much in demand and they earn real high salaries nowadays because the world needs lots of data scientists because in the next 10 to 15 years, 20 years, maybe more, uh, uh, the world will be on the path of developing lots and lots of AI applications as the world moves towards automation more and more. Uh, that's where... Uh, these needs are lies. So where do the people like old people like me sit in? You know, I, I'm, I'm now tomorrow, actually, I'm going to uh, uh, celebrate my 55th birthday. <laughs> so I'm 54 year old and tomorrow I'll be 54 year old. But as you see, no, it's a 55th birthday. Now, where do, where do people like me uh, who, who, who have you missed the bus? So the answer is no, because all of us, those who are in their 50s, they have got a lot of knowledge with them. And AI, developing an AI application needs a lot of domain knowledge. But in order to use that knowledge, you need to understand a little bit of AI, the, the way you understood today. I hope you are able to understand a lot of stuff today. So the way you understand that, where do I fit in? And depending on like, see, suppose some people would like to work for 10 more years or 20 more years, depending on how long you would like to work. Uh, you can choose uh, your area. Uh, those who are in their 40s, uh, definitely I would advise that uh, early 40s if uh, you are in, I would strongly recommend that you need to learn Python because next 20 to 30 years, it's like an ABCD, you know, when when you 
you know, person uh, who wants to be literate nowadays, he has to learn English language uh, uh, and ABCD, right? So similarly, you really need to learn that. And unless it is replaced by some other easier language, uh, because Python itself is very, very easy. Uh, and if you are in the, your 30s, uh, then of course, uh, uh, you know, if you are not, you sh must get, a, you know, some accreditation certification, you know, in data science. That's a recommendation. Uh, okay. And now, uh, towards the end, now, now last ten, 10 minutes before we open up for the questions, um, I'll just show you how easy it is to... Uh, uh, so, so Python, so if you want to work with Python, usually what you do, you just go to, it's very easy. You can do it right away uh, with me. So just put Anaconda distribution in the search, uh, uh, Google in Google search and just click on uh, Anaconda and you will, uh, uh, you will be able to uh, download. And once you download, you can very easily install. I'm not going to tell you the whole process right away. And you will be able to get a Jupyter notebook in just five minutes. Everything is done. And then you create a new Jupyter notebook and start writing your program. It's very, very simple. So you can say, uh, and now actually I have to save my time. I can just, uh, just before the session, I just wrote it towards something for you guys. So. Uh, yeah. So if I say hello BCCI, okay, BCIC, sorry, BCCI comes in. <laughs> Always that happens, BCIC. So uh, mm, let me let me write it. Let me write it for you here. So print hello BCIC. If I just write that. run the program, it will print hello BCIC. If I say X is equal to 10, and uh, let's say Y is equal to uh, 20, I say print X plus Y, and run the program, it will print 30. Then if I just put, uh, let me put this as well. I'm just trying to motivate all of you because many times people say, oh, I'm not into programming. I'm not, uh, uh, I've never coded. So let me tell you, in fact, although I had learned my Java 20 years ago, the way in 2000, 1990, and everyone's learning Java, I also learned, but I had told, I have never used it. I went into another domain after that. But uh, when I saw Python, like, even if you don't, you don't have any coding uh, background, still you can learn very easily. So here we have a written name is equal to input. What is your name, color? What is your favorite color? And if I run this program very easily, it will ask your name. It will ask your color. Let's say favorite color. And then it will tell you, hi, Amitabh, yellow is a great color. Okay, so very simple. And in eight hours, you can really learn uh, quite a bit of Python. So that's as easy as, you know, it is, you are seeing. It's not like, uh, you know, any false hopes to you. It's, it's a reality, I'm telling you. And I've seen lots of people, very, very senior people. They have learned this in very, uh, very less time. Okay. So with that, uh, if you have any questions, and of course, uh, Manas, if you are there, then uh, you would like to say a few words, and after that, uh, we can have some questions as well. Okay, so thanks a lot, uh, Mr. A.V. Srinivasan. Uh, uh, you know, the idea was to you know motivate people to towards AI and ML as much as possible because uh, you may be from manufacturing, pharmaceuticals, uh, uh, you may be from uh, uh, you know banking. Uh, financial services, logistics, lots of application in logistics nowadays. You can find the, uh, the, the fastest way to deliver a good to your clients. Uh, if, if you are in uh, 
uh, finance, you, you can use it for fraud detection. A lot of banks have used AI and ML for fraud detection. Uh, also, the capability of an individual to pay the loan. Uh, you can also uh, use it in insurance. Then you have got uh, lots of uh, 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 lots of applications in uh, healthcare. In fact, healthcare. Uh, if you permit me, I would I can make a full presentation of one hour or two hours just to talk about benefits in healthcare. So, someone has uh, uh, got unmuted by mistake. Yes. Yeah, so you can. Sir, uh, we have enabled the audio and video option for the participants. Yeah. Uh, for the Q and A session, sir. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We request the participants to uh, kindly raise the hand so that we you can just speak it. So in just one hour time, I tried to you know <laughs> give you as much as possible in the shortest possible time. But I'm sure you've got a, if you did not have any idea for about what is AI and ML like. Uh, as the title of the session suggested, AI and ML for dummies. So uh, I, I'm sure you are not a dummy anymore now uh, in AI and ML. Uh, Mr. Satish Kumar. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. It was a very good session. And my question is like uh, already I'm having a mechanical background, like uh, production and uh, product development, total of 13 years experience. So now if I want to switch out the career from mechanical to or data science related. So how your suggestion or what will be the best possible? Yeah. So uh, like, uh, first of all, I think the best is to join, uh, like I'll just take example. It's not like you have to come to my training only. <laughs> there are a lot of training centers and uh, companies and academies available. Uh, but uh, just to give an example, the, the way we offer is like, oh, we have uh, uh, 35 hours of basic AI and ML sessions, but basically we call it data science because data science uh, comprises of almost all the things which are required from a professional like you. So 30, 40 hours of basic data science course will tell you that, uh, is it this uh, area for you really? It requires a little bit of, uh, little bit of hard work, little bit, not too much, but that will give you an idea whether uh, you know, this is something which you would like to pursue further. And if you can, if you if you find it like it's very, uh, uh, so basic doesn't cover too much of complicated stuff, uh, not too many complicated algorithms. We cover, like say, I, I covered today regression, logistic regression, et cetera. This is all covered there. And once you know that, yeah, it's interesting that you can move on to the intermediate level, uh, which is again 30 to 40 hours of a session. And then again, if you find it's really, really useful, then you further go to the advanced level. So generally, uh, you have 30 hours, 30 and 35 hours, something like this. That's how we have distributed. Uh, most of the organizations, most of the academies have similar structure. But sometimes they name it differently, but uh, this is what is recommended. So wh what I recommend for you is that uh, if you've got an engineering background, it's very, very easy. The basic is very, very easy for you. Uh, you know, you'll just learn whatever you learned in your first year of engineering. And sometimes it's you learn something what you learned in school, you know. So that's that's what is basic is. Uh, intermediate would require a little bit of, uh, uh, I can say, uh, learning new concepts, uh, which uh, is very very uh, useful and also very. And then you have to choose which area you would like to master. You would like to master NLP, or would you like to master uh, neural networks? So uh, you, you have to choose your area. And then after that, in advance, you choose any one of the area. It's like, uh, you know, in, in engineering, you have you choose that whether I would be a mechanical engineer or a chemical engineer. Similarly, you also choose it some, somewhere in the in, intermediate level. And then after that, you become an expert. Uh, you have to do some projects. Like, for example, uh, we have got a lot of projects running in uh, uh, probably right now, uh, uh, un unknowingly, unwillingly, it's not like uh, 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 programmed like that, but somehow we are now into lots of healthcare related projects. Although we started, as I told you, uh, we started with uh, finance related uh, projects. So you get associated with those live projects and you learn on a real time basis. And then, you know, I think you can even change over to you know, total, totally being a data scientist. So I hope I have answered your question. Yes, sir. Thank you. And on one more thing, like uh, 
uh, after learning this course uh, so it will be considered as uh, fresher or they will consider previous uh, years of experience no. so you won't be considered as fresher you will be considered so i'll give my example uh although i was into six sigma so which is into all analysis of variance and chi square tests we have been conducting sessions and consulting people for the last 20 years but uh, as far as ai and ml goes it was just six years i entered into this uh, and uh, i was not considered as fresher uh, so the reason being you don't end up into coding always although if it is your interest then why not you can but generally people with good experience will be guiding the uh, uh, guiding the youngsters guiding the people uh, who are uh, you know generally the freshers so uh, the idea is uh, just to answer your question you will not be considered as fresher you will be considered as an experienced person at times it may happen that uh, your salary will be almost same as what you are earning or sometimes a little less but the 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 the, the increase in the salary will be very very fast and uh, for that you can just google out the salaries of uh, data scientists nowadays they are the number one position at this point of time thank you sir so good evening yeah good evening yes uh, actually what you suggested is the uh, same applicable to me sir i am core and electronics engineer and move to the artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, uh, program and started learning the fundamentals of data science ml uh, now i am going with the deep learning techniques and uh, nlp also uh, even i am 40 plus i am able to do it uh, so that gives me the motivation is yes, we can learn and we can do uh, still better and better things definitely yeah. our experience will support uh, for all these activities i think Right. And the so, session was very crisp and uh, beautiful. And I think you are given a lot of inputs in a very short duration, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks. If it is coming from a person who knows AI and ML, I value your input a lot because, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's very difficult. You would know. I you would know, know in one hour. You know, uh, one year how, only how I entered into the stream, sir. Uh, so I'm also new to the system, but I, I'm quite interested in learning the things, sir. That make me to more do more and more better things. I think. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks. So can I can I add one more question? To yes, this, please go ahead. So I was expecting some of the research areas with uh, A and M will. Uh, some we are doing with some uh, agriculture based uh, image processing. I mean, identifying the disease. All those things we are working on it uh, with respect to my research uh, along with my scholar. Uh, but somewhere we will struck with when you are taking a, a lot of images, like around 5,000 images or 10,000 images, uh, and classification of the images, uh, we are feeling a little difficult. Can you guide us uh, what we can go, how we can reduce the dimensionality of the, uh, I mean, my data set or image, images? Yeah, so uh, uh, you can connect with me separately. Uh, yes. I'll be happy to answer this question because uh, here, of course, obviously, it will be difficult to answer the, this question. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So I hope uh, uh, many of you are now uh, aware of no longer dummies, at least in AI and ML, and that is the whole purpose. So next session when we are holding, uh, I am sure you will say, well, I am not a dummy. <laughs> so on that note, I think uh, I'll hand it over to uh, BCIC and... Uh, um, thank you very much, sir. That was quite a wonderful, exhaustive session. And uh, we will be shortly uploading this recording link in our uh, YouTube. So participants can view once again the video. On behalf of BCIC, we express our sincere thanks once again to Mr. Amitabh Saxena. Thank you very much, sir, for, your, uh, for the workshop. A very good evening and have a nice day, all of you. Thank you, Thanks, sir.